I shoot raw. Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo here doing another guest post for ferronosephoto.com. Today I'm going to be going over the new watermarking features in Lightroom 3. Uh, first thing I notice in Lightroom 3 is that it is definitely faster to do a watermark. The old way that I used to do it was with a program called LR Myography. It was a great uh, little plug-in that I used and allowed me to do everything. It actually allows me to do more stuff than the Adobe plugin does or the Adobe, new Adobe way does, so I'm still going to keep it around and still going to use it, but I'm going to show you the basic one that they finally, in version 3, have implemented. This totally should have been in since version 1. Uh, the original one was pretty poor, in my opinion. Anyway, let's do it. Uh, we will go to File, and we will go to Export. We will bring up our export dialog box. Uh, you see I have a lot of preferences and stuff here already. And I've saved one, but I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, number one, first got to kind of find it. It's kind of hidden, but it kind of wasn't. It was in the same place, watermarking, right here, two-thirds of the way down. You can check or uncheck your watermark. And so we're going to hit the drop down. We're going to go edit watermarks. And we're going to get another box and then we can choose text or we can choose a graphic now I already have text set up but I'll show you what I did number one type in my name down here at the bottom okay uh, on a PC if you want to get the little copyright symbol you can do alt 0169 on a Mac sorry I don't know how to do that uh, again on a PC alt 0169 to get the little copyright symbol so next thing text you have it typed in choose your font choose your style placement or I should say alignment color I like to either use white or black uh, just so that it contrasts well uh, sometimes I also have a dark and a light version of it just so that it watermarks better you know it makes it a little more difficult to edit out because obviously that's the goal of a watermark uh, opacity uh, slider allows you to change that go up and down of you know how dark how light all that kind of stuff uh, offset is up and down um, your radius all that stuff for shadow um, I just kind of left it at the default when I had created it wasn't wasn't a whole lot uh, then there's obviously the entire watermark effect where you can make it completely solid if you wanted or you can make it a little bit more faint just so you can kind of see the picture through there uh, now I like doing it to fit uh, because I want it to go all the way across you could choose to do a fill which obviously would make it really text really big and like I said I like to do fit to make it work but if you choose proportional you can uh, change the size however you want inset is up and down I'm sorry inset is zooming in okay and then you have a vertical one also so that you can keep it off the edges kinda of like margins that kinda of thing and then you have your positions top bottom middle all that good stuff even a rotate button nice new nice little feature alright so then once we have it all set to where we want it up here to this box at the top drop down save current settings as new preset alright save current settings as new preset so that's a text one so next let's do a new one and this time we're gonna do a graphic this is something that I actually haven't even done yet for myself with my new logo so I chose a PNG image PNG images will allow us to uh, have a transparent background so that you can see through that uh, if you're not sure to do that I would definitely Google how to do that uh, if you had someone design a logo for you, uh, go back to that designer and get yourself a, a nice transparent background and you'll get a, a nicer result instead of having a big white square or something behind it. Now, uh, for this time, I'm actually not going to do it all the way across. This one, I'm, I'm going to do it solid and I'm going to put it in the bottom corner here so I choose this button and I'm going to make it proportional and let's see I think that's probably about good I'm gonna move my inset in let's 
make that at four. Actually, I'm gonna make these even. And let's go back down to three. I think three is good. Yes, yeah, that's a nice amount of space there. Okay, and that's good. And you can see all this other stuff is grayed out. Again, that is the nice thing about that other plugin that I was telling you about. Again, it's called LRMography. Uh, I'll tell Jared to put a link in there for that so that you can see it and go to that. It would allow me to do a graphic and text and say, I like the other thing I like to do is to put the file name when I'm shooting a wedding or a big event and I'm hitting, handing out proofs. I like to put the file name down here in the bottom left hand corner. That other plugin will allow me to do all that stuff, even put some of the EXIF data from the photo. So uh, maybe I'll do another video for that some, some other time. Uh, so again, I have my picture posted here, and then I am going to save it. And we have this new preset dialog box that comes up. And I'm going to give it a name. And then we're going to hit done. Now my watermark that I just saved is already chosen. And I'm going to hit export. And make sure you make the graph at a graphic a decent size so that it can be scaled up or down. Because you have a bigger picture, it's going to want a bigger one. I would say a graphic around a thousand pixels is a good size to start with. Uh, so we get a nice picture here, or a nice uh, watermark here, obviously, on the rest of the picture, and it works. Obviously, there's other ways to do it. If you wanted it no color, uh, you could should edit the graphic, or maybe make a couple different versions of that graphic to then use as watermarks after. Just another option. All right. So uh, this is actually today's 365 photo. Uh, I was out at a local park, uh, actually a local lake that's right around the corner uh, from my house. I've lived in this area all the, uh, for a long, long time. And anyway, uh, this boat was really attractive to me. It was a really overcast, kind of nasty day, trying to rain. But this just caught my eye. I shot this with a 24 to 70, 2.8, and a Nikon D3. Uh, really nice shallow depth of field. Shot like two or three photos of it. I'd actually focused up in here a little bit, and it didn't work. Ended up moving it down here. So it worked much, much better. If you'd like to follow my 365 project, you can go to 365.cazillo.com, or you can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Thank you very much. Uh, you will be seeing another guest post soon. Uh, sounds like Jared is going to have me do these on a regular basis. So look forward to more Lightroom 3 tutorials at ferronosphoto.com. See ya.